So one of the biggest questions I get asked from my NVIDIA GeForce Experience fixed share problem is the simple fact that people want to know if there's any separate recording. And just in general, this has been around for a long time as far as recording in YouTube wise goes and stuff like that. People want to know if there's any alternative to it. Well, there actually is. There's a few alternatives. One is if you're going for best, absolutely 100% best non-quality loss, you would use something like MSI Afterburner and capture using their recording. Uh, but this is very, very taxing on your system. Very, the heaviest taxing I've seen as far as recording software. You will get the best quality possible, but the file sizes are ridiculous. To give you an example, a 10 minute file size using that program to record is 70 gigabytes, not megabytes, 70 gigabytes gigabytes that's the full installation of gta 5 about for anybody wondering so it's huge but the two biggest ones that are brought up most is obs versus nvidia geforce experience or shadow play essentially the issue here with shadow play and nvidia geforce experience is even when you're not playing a game they're running in the background they're using up resources that don't need to be used obs is only using up resources when you want them to use resources when you're recording and stuff like that all right when you bring it up on your system so you you can actually free up some of your system CPU usage by getting rid of GeForce Experience. A lot of people recommend completely getting rid of GeForce Experience, just only GeForce Experience, and then you manually install the drivers every time when they're available on the NVIDIA website. Now you can do this and can go about this and it will actually improve your FPS in the games. It's been proven that if you have NVIDIA GeForce Experience on your system, you lose about a 10%, 10-15% to 15 FPS loss in your games, whether or not you're recording with Shadow Play or not, it makes a difference. Now let's go over to OBS. So OBS does not run automatically. Okay, you have to run it when you want to record. It's a little bit more complicated to set up than Shadow Play, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it, and you'll see why. So, the game I'm using in both these tests is Call of War as Gunslinger. And the reason I'm using this game is it kind of has like a Borderlands cartoony look to it. Now, you may be wondering why are we looking at this? Well, the reason being is cartoony like games such as like Borderlands and Call of War as and stuff like that essentially make it so when you move left and right with recording and with bitrate, you will be able to see pixelation and or graininess or blurriness caused by the videos quality so that's why we're going with this game now there's a big big confusing when it comes to obs on here so obs for a lot of people think that you only use bitrate when streaming this is incorrect all right this is completely incorrect bitrate is you for streaming and recording a bitrate is actually is basically to put it in simpler form to make it really simple to where everybody can understand, the higher bitrate you record, the better video quality. However, the higher bitrate you record, the more taxing it's gonna be on your system. The lower bitrate, the crappier the quality. That's essentially how it goes without going into statistics and details and all that. That's just the basics, okay? So if we go and open OBS right here and we go to output, we go to recording, uh, we got MP4 and you want your encoder to be NVENC, basically N-V-E-N-C H264. You're gonna have to switch between this every once in a while and what I mean by that is if if you know a game is GPU intensive, you switch to X264. If you know a game is CPU intensive, you switch to any, you basically switch to NVENC or NVENC H264. All right. And the reason you're doing this is because you don't want to overtax your CPU and or GPU and it'll let you know so and so is overloaded when you go to record on OBS. Next, what you want to do is for your rate control, you want it to set it to constant bitrate. Do not do variable or anything like that because that will adjust your bitrate. And then I am doing this test at 50,000. Newer games will require you to go lower than 50,000. Okay. So the reason we're actually doing 50,000, even though YouTube only allows up to, I think about six or 10,000. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because when you compress the, the higher quality you record it, when you compress it, the better quality it'll be. So if we take a 1080p gameplay video and we basically scale it down and bring it to, you know, 720p, but it was recorded in like 500 bit rate, it'll look shit. If we take a 50,000 1080p and we scale it down to 720p, it's going to look sharp and crisp and clean. Or even if you just do 1080p, if you just do 1080p, you know what I'm saying? So that's basically where that goes with that. We want it to be as crisp and as clean as possible while not taxing our system over. So for instance, this game Call of War as Gunslinger is not a very taxing game because it's an older game. Games such as like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and stuff like that, you probably won't be able to do 50,000 bitrate, but... 
However, I recommend doing around 20,000 or so and then rendering about as high as you can. That way you stay at the best quality possible so it doesn't compress it as much. Once you have all those settings, you could go ahead and do a recording test. And our recording tests are very clear here. So we could see this is what the OBS recording test looks like. And both these are gonna have color corrected settings. I color corrected them myself, all right, in the editing program that I use. So we can see right here, this is the OBS settings right now, playing right now. Just look as when I turn left and right, you can see that there's less graininess and less pixelation than shadow play as we're about to show you in a second. So this is now shadow play and you can see the overall, what it looks like now, what the quality looks like and everything. These were both rendered using the same settings in the editing program and none of it was edited in any way shape or form except for a color correction added to the gameplay overall what we can see here is obs is way more crisp clean and clear because you have more control over your bit rate versus shadow play just allows you to use a little slider to select your bit rate however the issue is that obs is more taxing on your system depending on how high of a bit rate you go let's say you go at a hundred thousand bit rate you're going to overtax your system you don't need to be doing that you're going to cpu overload it you know gpu overload it don't do it all right so try to find a good medium here between like i you i personally usually do uh 10 000 for streaming and 20 000 and up for recording no matter what game it is 20 000 and up and that gives me a very good quality once i compress it down into a video file size but if you are having issues where basically obs isn't working or your system is not good enough in order to do recording using obs and your cpu just keeps getting overloaded shadow play is your best alternative in order to do that people who are able to play and use obs on their systems and record at the same time it's a very good alternative to shadow play to basically just get rid of that geforce experience program that's taking up resources that's taking up your fps and just use obs when you want to so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what do you guys personally use and i'll see you guys next time